Hey guys, welcome back to Andy's MG Adventures for part two of my Clutch Slave Cylinder Replacement Video Series Saga. Today's video is all about how to bleed your clutch. Pretty simple kit needed for this job. You're gonna need some brake and clutch fluid. There are different opinions about what to use, but for the amount I drive her, dot four is perfectly fine. And seeing as I'm flushing the system, I'm gonna go for all of this. One of these, there are many of these on the market, but the Gunson's Easy Bleed, I've heard nothing but good things about. So this is a one person job, technically, with this bad boy. Also need a jam jar, just for catching the old fluid. I've got a couple of these. And I've just got a couple of spanners because we're gonna need to crank open the nipple. <coughs> Sound effects optional. The other thing you're going to need is a tire with a Schrader valve on it, because basically the easy bleed is gonna use that to pressurize the system. So just doing the prep work, I've got the Gunson's bottle out. It says max 20 PSI. On my tire, I've actually reduced the pressure right down to below 15, so hopefully that won't be too much. I might drop it a bit more. I've also taken the filler cap off uh, the master cylinder and wanted to measure up against the equivalent uh, one for this easy bleed. Now, what we need to do is get the pipe. You can see there's these two washers and two nuts. They need to go either side of this aperture here so we can screw it on and this will give a nice, uh, safe and solid connection for the fluid to run through under pressure. Just so you can see, now there's a little rubber O-ring to go in here, which I've got down there next to the old one. Let's get it all in. So let's have a look at this setup so far. Oh, what's that doing there? Don't worry, there's a lot of cushions and a bit of wood to keep this because you need your air source close to where you're doing all the work, especially if we need to depressurize the system. Uh, I've got the jar here, which has now got the hose connected up to the remote bleed nipple that we've installed on the slave cylinder. I've got this bit ready to go on to the master cylinder. So we're gonna give this a go. We're gonna hook this up and then connect up to the Schrader valve, open up the bleed nipple, and hopefully things will start to move some air. There we go. We wanna get that nice and tight. We don't want any air getting out of this. Tighten that up. This needs to stay upright at all times. We don't want fluid getting everywhere, so I'm just going to tuck her in there. There we go. That's on. So we've got the Gunson's Easy Bleed bottle, nice and tight with fluid in it. We've got the adapter connected firmly onto the master cylinder. We've got the bleed nipple that we've got down here with the hose connected into a jar, ready to pressurize the system. And then hopefully when we unlock that bleed nipple, some air will come through. So let's see, shall we? Wish us luck. Okay, let's do this. Now the system is pressurized. Next step is to unlock the bleed nipple. Here it comes. I'm just going to stop it a sec. I'm just going to stop it so you can see. Can you see there are air bubbles in this fluid? I unlock it a bit more. There come the air bubbles. Do you see? This is what we want out of the system. We don't want any air bubbles in the system. So we're going to bleed this clutch get all the air out. Let's depressurize. So the kit I've just removed, the nipple is tightened off down there and the reservoir has fluid to the top. So now the thing is to get the cap back on um, check all round for leaks and then see if there's clutch pressure. So that's everything put back together again. 
Now the next step is to test under the car and see if there's movement with the uh, clutch slave push rod. Now that we know that that's moving, it's time to lower the car down and see how well it engages with the engine turning over. And we will see. If it doesn't work, the pedal feels quite a lot lighter, so I might not have another crack at bleeding it. But um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. So I got the car down, I put it into gear, and I got the wife to push with my foot fully on the clutch, and the car didn't move, which means that the clutch isn't moving enough. There's not enough travel on the push rod to uh, disengage the clutch, the engine from the gearbox. So it means it probably needs a bit more bleeding because the pedal felt a bit soft. So I'm gonna leave the clutch pedal pressed down overnight um, and we'll see if that helps. Hey guys, so uh, as you know, I had a crack at doing the, uh, the bleeding and the slave cylinder install myself. I've been using the Gunson's Easy Bleed and I just wasn't getting the results I wanted with the, uh, the clutch movement. Uh, so uh, I've tried everything, uh, but I've had to break out the big guns, I'm afraid. Uh, everything sort of looks a bit okay there, Andy. Can't see that you've done much wrong underneath. The only thing I'd say is you need to put a bit of copper slip on your clevis, darling. As you know, this is the setup you saw before. Pressure from the tire. In through this bowl here, pressurizes the system, forces oil through. Once you open the bleed nipple, technically all the air should come through, pressurize your system, lock it off, job done. Not working. So we're going to try old school, aren't we, Dave? Yeah, basically there was nothing there. There was clear fluid passing through, but not enough to uh, allow this, the, pre, uh, the clutch pedal to uh, pressurize itself. So I'm going to just do it how I used to do it. Now the way that Dave uses to do it is goodbye pressurized bottle of air. We're going to use one of these, which is essentially, um, to, the, to the layman's eyes, a bottle with a bit of loose pipe attached to it. Uh, but actually there's something rather clever about this particular bit of hose that had bypassed my knowledge. Now we're going to detach all of the uh, easy bleed stuff that I got uh, and have a crack at reassembling with Dave's toy. So we've got, just so I can show you, we've got this kit. This is the receptacle that the oil being pushed through the system will go into. It has a flexible hose on the end and you can see down the bottom there, the bleed nipple that I've brought up through from the clutch slave that we've just installed. So Dave's just going to chuck, just like we did with the other version, similar thing. You gotta make sure the, uh, the tube's at the bottom in the fluid. Yes, so the, the tube has to be in that fluid rather than just flapping around in the air. That's important, isn't it, Dave? Why is it important? So you don't get air back into the system when you take the pressure off. There we go. Uh, so, of course, this does mean, most importantly, that the master cylinder here is exposed, as you can see. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna undo the bleed valve so there's an open pipe basically between the master cylinder and the container that's catching the fluid. So there we go, we've cracked it off now Okay. and uh, we're going to go and basically pump the clutch pedal a few times. Now purists might not like this because you're essentially moving fluid over the valve but for my one it works. Cool, so I'll go and... Or shall I do it Andy? Yeah, go for it. Okay. Here we go. <sighs> One, two, three, four, five, and one for luck. Okay. And that's pushing all the air, remaining air, through. And fluid. And, and fluid. fluid. Into that. Yeah, into there. So now what I'm going to do, because there should be no air in the system, and everything is encapsulated in fluid. I'm going to shut the bleed valve off, which yeah. I've done. So that's now in. nice and tight. So essentially it's a one man operation still. I will go and try, I want to try the clutch, Dave. I want to see okay, you feels. do the clutch, Andy. I want to see how it feels. Now before, it felt like I was treading on a jellyfish that I'd found on the beach. 
No resistance or very little resistance. Dave, I'm going to go for it. Is it safe? Yeah, safe, yeah. All right. Oh. Well, that one, that's like treading on a fallen log in the forest. There is a lot, a lot of pressure there. And the most important thing is there's little to no play, the sort of usual play you'd expect at the top of the pedal before then it just bites straight away. You feel that resistance straight away. There's very little travel for the top. Sorry about my hair, by the way. It's been a very hectic morning. Uh, okay, well, that's the desired result, is it not, Dave? Yeah, it's good to go. We'll take it off the blocks and take it for a spin. Nice. Job done. Get in. Okay, we've got her off the axle stands and we're in a position now to see if this works. We have actually done a little dry test just to see if pushing it with the clutch down works, i.e. you can move it with the clutch press down in gear. Uh, but now we're gonna try it with the engine turning over. So just in case my ankle gets ripped off, I'm gonna do this properly. Because it's been cold, she hasn't been started in a while. Slip of the foot. Oh! Too soon. Just gonna let it tick over for a sec. Just back gently. That's a sign. There you go. Oh my god, the bite point is right at the bottom. Yeah. Jesus Christ! The bite. <laughs> right. Job done. Time for a beer, Andy. So, uh, we have proven that uh, the Gunston's Easy Bleed for us didn't quite do the job. Uh, I'm not sure entirely sure why, um, but Dave wanted to do it the old fashioned way and it worked. I mean, I felt the difference straight away. And to my simple mind, I was like, how can we leave the, the master reservoir open when you're pushing fluid through? Isn't gonna spill out everywhere, but no. And these are the simple things that a newbie like me doesn't, doesn't get until I have a chance to, to play with Dave. You know what I mean. Um, so anyway, we did the old fashioned way, got pressure on the clutch. Uh, the only odd thing now is that it's biting a lot lower to the floor. This engaging gear is totally fine. And I'm guessing it's something to do with the length of the push rod. So I'm using the original push rod in the clutch slave that I replaced. So maybe there's a difference in terms of the movement between that, the length of it maybe. Because um, the bike is quite close to the floor. But anyway, it's totally drivable. It's just going to be a different way of driving. Um, but yeah, we got it working. She's alive. So if you liked that and you want to see more of... Dave, let's be honest, uh, then hit subscribe for all of the uh, new adventures that 2023 will bring us. In the meantime, take care. Love you lots. Ooh.